Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we'll be ranking every boss in Persona 3 Reload based on their difficulty, purpose in the story, and creativity in mechanics. Do note that we're only considering story bosses. If we included any Tartarus or Monad specific bosses, we'd be here all day. There's just too many of those. It's Arcana is justice. Uh, no, wait. It's Chariot? Before we begin, we publish new videos all week long, so be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Number 15, Chidori Yoshino. Chidori! What's going on? Talk to me! We aren't saying Chidori is the worst boss fight of the game, although in order to be a decent boss fight, you do need to, you know, put up a fight. Assuming you've been leveling up your party members at a reasonable pace, you can end the battle within a few minutes. You're all just a nuisance. Get ready. The only real purpose behind Chidori's fight is for narrative and not much else, so that's why she's so low on the list. At least her story with Junpei is one of the game's best aspects. It hurt. I can't breathe. I'm scared. Junpei. Number 14, Emperor and Empress. There's two of them? The second and third of the major arcanas are sort of on the same level as Chidori. Neither of these two are designed to really kick your butt, they're mostly there just for narrative purposes. However, they are also here to introduce Fuka's role in the story and how her powers work in battle. It's to help you identify a decent flow in battle and know what you should be doing on your first turn while Fuka prepares for the second turn. I'll begin searching for the monster's weaknesses. We'll give credit to the overall visual design of the Emperor and Empress, but for the most part, you'll walk out of this with not much satisfaction, and you'll probably forget that this fight even happened. Number 13, Takaya Sakaki and Jin Shirato. As I believed, our goals are irreconcilable. It's time, Jin. What a bunch of fools. Considering how these two are introduced in June, it's kind of shocking how comically easy they are to fight in early November, especially for two Persona users. There you go. Seriously? This will be your end. Out of my way. Takaya and Hipster Skrillex simply don't understand how the odds might be severely stacked against them. Just having one or two party members continuously debuff them while the others attack will make them a total joke. So long as you're balancing the debuffs with buffs for your own party, you should make it out with very little struggle. Number 12, Jin Shirato. However it turns out, this is the end. I'm going all out. The only reason Jin gets a spot higher than when you fight him and Takaya together is because this is the last time you have to deal with him. Mr. Obsessed with Grenades has spent all game acting like he's such a badass, and even without Takaya, he's a walking punchline. Does he have any new tricks up his sleeve? Yeah, one. Revealing your party's weaknesses. Ooh, I'm so scared. How original. Come on. All you have to do here is go full assault like you did when he was with his leader. Buff, debuff, and use third G's and aim for criticals as much as possible. Then the roach will be squashed for good. This character sucks, man. It's an it. <laughs> Number 11, Hanged Man. This is the final battle. I'll do everything I can to support you. Just Please be careful out there. Whether you find the Hanged Man hard or easy, we can all agree that this is the most annoying of the major arcana bosses. So much of your time is spent having to demolish the statues that allow it to fly. And that's just one part of the equation. The other part is slowly chipping away at its beefy health bar. Even if your party members are at a good enough level to face this beast, you'll find the Hanged Man gets tedious quickly.
Number 10, Fortune and Strength. The Fortune Arcana is gone? The Strength Arcana must have done something. These two will be as easy or hard as you make it out to be and as the game wants it to be. The gimmick here is that Strength will constantly buff Fortune, and as for Fortune itself, every move it makes is randomized by a spinner. Whatever the spinner lands on will affect both Strength and your party until its next turn. That said, you will need to keep everyone's health bars above a certain amount to avoid them getting wiped out in one move. Annoying? Yes. But we'd rather deal with this than the repetitive cycle in the Hanged Man's battle. I've had enough of gambling with fate. Let's take it down! Number 9, Takaya Sakaki. I take it you've defeated Jin. You are quite a troublesome bunch. Takaya can be just as obnoxious as his green Shadow the Hedgehog henchman. Dude's really gotta eat up our time to get all philosophical and maniacal with his bad guy dialogue, but we'll give him credit in how he puts up a way better fight than he did fighting alongside Jin. He hits harder, boasts more health, and will be a bit more aggressive in trying to insta-kill your teammates. <laughs> You really shouldn't have too much trouble dealing with him if you just avoid dealing light or dark damage and balance your usage of buffs and attacks well. Also, make sure you have at least one persona that has the null light or null dark effects. This can't be. Number 8, Priestess. This boss was such a cool way to introduce the game's pacing and how the major arcanas would incorporate unique mechanics. The priestess has hijacked a train and caused it to start running at maximum speed. You, Junpei, and Yukari must defeat it before the timer reaches zero. I've never seen one this big before, but there's no time. We have to end this now! Not only does the timer run throughout the fight and while you're taking your turn, but the priestess can cause it to decrease after each phase. If you have taken too long on one turn, this could end in disaster for you. Of course, that's if you're being indecisive. Other than that, it's not that tough of a boss. Number 7, The Hierophant. This large shadow is of the Hierophant Arcana. Huh? don't know what it'll do. Be ready for anything. Speaking of easy bosses, the Hierophant is only a problem if you haven't been buying items or if you're not making the most of your turns. The Hierophant is fairly aggressive and can inflict fear with most of its attacks. If inflicted, you and your party members won't be able to do anything when their turn comes. You'll be paralyzed if you succumb to the fear. Don't push yourself and try to calm down. That said, it is imperative that you keep cleansing items at all times and make sure you keep giving your team the best equipment they can possibly have. Do this and the Hierophant shouldn't be as stressful to deal with. Number six, the Hermit. So this is one of those huge shadows. Hmm. Well, not like it changes what we usually do. Whereas the Hierophant relies heavily on the same attacks over and over again, the Hermit relies a lot on frying your party with charged attacks. Really, this thing loves spamming the Gigaspark move. <sighs> this is different from how it's been charging up till now. It's powered up significantly. Everyone, hang in there! It ultimately makes its pattern super predictable and, with the right buffs in place, easy to avoid. That said, bringing Akihiko will be a massive help in your assault and overall make the fight about as hard as the Hierophant or the Priestess. Number 5, Lovers. 
So it was you. I'll teach you not to mess with a girl's heart. The lover's arcana can be a really dangerous foe. Like, really dangerous. The lover's has a tendency to try and inflict charm on your party members every other turn. And most of the time, it will affect almost everybody on the team. Cure your team before the Arcana can act again, or else you'll be subjected to its Heartbreaker attack. While this will rid your team of charm, those who are still inflicted will receive a massive amount of damage compared to those who are not inflicted. Stay on top of cleansing, and you should be okay for the most part. Number 4, Chariot Injustice. It's Arcana, it's Justice! It's Chariot? Of the major arcanas, this will be your toughest opponent of the bunch. Chariot and Justice are two separate arcanas that possess the ability to fuse with each other, creating a near impenetrable form. I see now. The turret is Justice, and the larger one is Chariot. With Chariot being immune to physical attacks and Justice being immune to magic, it can be particularly frustrating to deal with them together. The trick here is to land a strong enough attack to separate them. From there, you will have to find a way to take them both out at the same time. Defeating one will only cause the other to perform a revive. Our advice, have three party members prioritize justice. This will keep Chariot preoccupied with reviving, and the amount of health restored does get smaller as revives keep happening. Just keep your fourth member focused on healing and attacking Chariot when possible. Number three, Elizabeth. You spend all this time fulfilling requests and showing Elizabeth the wonders of the human race, and what do you get? A supreme ass whooping. The Velvet Room attendant has seen a better adjustment in damage output here in Reload compared to her original iteration. Alas, that does not make things too easy. You will have to make sure you are abiding by her rules the entire fight. One slip up and she will wipe out your entire party. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. And if she attempts to use die for me, you can only pray it misses as homunculus cannot be used to take the hit. So good freaking luck! Number two, the Reaper. When Persona 3 Reload first introduces the Reaper, it's safe to assume that you should just avoid this monster at all costs and take care in not wandering around too much on one floor. Thing is that you can defeat this guy and get a good reward out of it. You just shouldn't attempt it until you're in an absurdly high level. Fair warning though, the Reaper will make you sweat. In addition to boasting a wealth of abilities that deal massive amounts of damage, the Reaper can take four consecutive actions on the first turn of combat. It will take only two for the rest of the fight, but if you plan on taking this beast down, you better come in with exceptional defense and plenty of items. Otherwise, you better hope that one of your party members survives the first turn. And take Number one, the Nyx Avatar. <laughs> Ryoji-kun. That was my name for a time. I almost miss it. Of course, the Nyx Avatar is our favorite boss fight in this game. Was there another option? I don't think so. This boss serves as the ultimate test. The intense trial in seeing if you truly understand Reload's mechanics in using Thurgies, switching personas when necessary, and how to make the most of each shift opportunity. One of the greatest blessings attained from the gift of life is the freedom 
to pursue one's personal goals. It is the biggest challenge you will face, and once conquered, you'll feel like you could take on any of the other Persona games with no problem. Let it witness your resolve! Sorry, wrong Persona game. Still an awesome fight, though. Which of these bosses did you find the most challenging? Let us know down in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays for more great videos every day.